Hi, I'm Nicole, one of the Wealth Twins. We teach others how to manage and invest their money. Now, since I believe it's basically a fact that the less you know about money, the more it will cost you, I'm making this video specifically today to talk about financial literacy. I'm gonna tell you exactly what financial literacy is, the skills you need to have to become financially literate, and how you can improve your financial literacy going forward. If that sounds good to you, hit that like button and we'll get started. Now, what exactly is financial literacy? Well, financial literacy is really having the knowledge and a set of skills so that you can handle your money in a way that will allow you to manage your personal finances, make good money decisions, and achieve all your money goals. It's basically a life skill that you need in order to be financially secure and overall have a good quality of life when it comes to your money. It's important to be financially literate because if not, you will mismanage your money, you won't be able to plan for the future when it comes to your money needs, and you will most likely fall victim to a lot of costly money mistakes that could be avoided. You know, my parents didn't have much experience when it came to financial literacy. In fact, I was the first one to actually get a credit card and I was the first one to actually have a bank account. You see, when my parents got paid, they actually would use check cashing services in order to get money from their paycheck. I remember even in my late 20s, when I picked my father up for a ride, he asked me to drop him off at the check cashing place. When I asked him why he was still using check cashing places to actually get money from his paycheck, he admitted that he still didn't have a bank account and that check cashing places were convenient and he just really didn't know any better. You know, he even used to tip the people at these check casting places because he felt they were nice and they, he liked the service. When I actually sat him down and explained to him that if he actually used a direct deposit that was available at his job, he could not only get his check earlier, he can also keep more of the money for himself. When he realized that and he actually knew that this could be possible and it was easy to do, he was right on board. That same day, we went to the bank and opened up a bank account. My parents, my father and my mother were both smart. But financial literacy was not taught in schools and in the neighborhoods that we grew up in, there was no one really that you could talk to about these matters. It was after that ride and that day when I took him to open up his bank account that I realized that even in my 20s, I had a different financial knowledge than my parents because I was exposed to a different world coming from Wall Street and stuff. Wanted to help people like my parents who did not have the same access to information when it came to learning about money as I did was one of the reasons Nadia and I decided to start Wealth Twins. Everyone should have the opportunity to learn the best ways to manage their money. Really, no one needs check cash in places nowadays because there's so many more options that you can use in order to have access to your money and also they have lower fees, even if you're not near a bank. You can access some of these options just with your cell phone and you can even deposit your check using your cell phone. If you need an alternative when it comes to check cashing places, check out Capway. It's a company that is designed to help you with your banking services and also makes it more convenient for you to get access to your money with lower fees than you would find at a check cashing place. If you're interested in learning more about Capway, the link is in the description below. Now, outside of staying away from check cashing places, you also need to learn certain skills to become financial literate. I'm talking about skills such as learning how to create a budget, learning what it means to get into debt, what your responsibilities are to pay it off, and the terms and conditions of the loans that you sign up for. You should also know the importance of credit and how to protect it, as well as learning how to invest. Now, if I had to prioritize these skills, the first skill you should focus on is learning how to create a budget because that will show you your spending habits and also show you areas where you have an opportunity to save. After you learn how to create and manage a budget, I think the next best skill to learn is how to protect your credit because credit is so important in our society and has so many ramifications when you get it wrong and you end up with bad credit. Your credit score is very fragile and important at the same time. Your credit score would dictate what types of loans you get in terms of the rate you get the loan at and also the amount, or even if you can get the loan in general. Your credit score can also dictate maybe where you are able to live. And at one point, your credit score could affect even the job you were able to take. Now, most people start building their credit history around the age of 18. And that's a very young age. And if you're not financially literate, you can do something at that young age that can end up haunting you for years. Bad credit is so prominent in this country that the credit repair business is actually a 
$2 billion industry. Now, if you use their services to help repair your credit, you might pay upwards to $149 a month for their services. It might seem like a good trade-off if they can actually repair your credit. However, I'm going to show you why this is not exactly a good deal. The reality is that a credit repair company is not magic. They cannot remove anything that's on your credit report that's negative that actually should be there. Anything that a credit repair company can take off your record, you can do it as well for free by yourself. Now, if you really want to repair your credit history, all you have to do is the following. One, you need to start looking at what's on your credit report and two, start paying your bills on time and lower the amount of debt that you have outstanding. If you do that for a consistent basis, you will improve your credit score. Now, if you believe you have bad credit and you want to repair it yourself, the first thing you need to do is actually confirm that you have bad credit. Find out what your credit score is and also get a free copy of your credit report. Everyone in this country is entitled to one free credit report a year by the government. I will leave a link below in the description to tell you exactly where you can get your free credit report. Once you have your free credit report, you're going to look at the information and anything that's not correct. I want you to contact the three credit agencies, which are TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. All those links I will leave below as well. Now, fixing your credit yourself might not be as easy as actually contacting one of these credit repair companies. However, in the long run, you will benefit from it because not only you will know what's on your credit report, you will know what you need to do to actually start repairing it yourself and also later on how you can protect it from going back down in the future. And on top of that, although it may take you a little longer to do it yourself, it'll be a lot cheaper than using one of those credit repair companies. So keep some money in your pocket. Now, since we're on the topic of credit, why not talk about credit cards and how becoming financially literate will help you make better decisions on which credit cards you should have. We've all been in the stores when we've been offered 20% off if you get the store's credit card. It might seem like a good deal, especially if you have a big purchase that you're making in that store that day. However, in the long run, it's not. These store credit cards have an average APR, which is basically an interest rate on a credit card, of 28%. And on top of that, there's limitations as to how much you're going to actually get off your future purchases with that card. It is much better instead of paying that card, especially if you don't pay that card off on a monthly basis, you'll be tacking on that interest. It will start to balloon as a payment. But there are also better credit cards out there that you can use that will allow you more variety of points that you can accrue for different purposes. So don't just go for the store credit card because you think you're going to get a bargain in the store. Choose the best credit card for your situation because you can get one that might give you travel points, that might give you hotel points, that might give you money back on food. Don't just go for a credit card because the company or the store has suggested they can give you money back. In the long run, it's going to benefit that store and not you. Credit is not the only area where being financially illiterate can actually hurt you. There are a lot of people that got burned with NFT scams and also through the crypto scam of FTX. Crypto and the DeFi market are very new and there are many people entering that market looking to make a lot of money by investing in it. However, you need to be financially literate before getting into that type of business. Crypto and NFTs don't provide passive income just because you buy them. Unless you're staking these type of investments, the only way to make money off of them is to sell them for more than what you bought them. People looking to get rich quick off of these type of investments actually fell victim to a lot of pump and dump schemes because they didn't realize the amount of risk involved and those people that were looking to prey on the beginning investor. I'm not saying all crypto is bad, but you need to be aware of certain terminology and the risk involved before you actually take part in this new type of environment. I'm talking about you need to understand what staking means. How about self-custody? You need to understand the, uh, the idea of wallets because those things are what led to a lot of people getting involved in FTX and not taking their money out when they should have because they had them on the platform. Although it's easy to get into crypto, it's also very risky and you should know those risks because they will dictate the money decisions you make. Do not take the idea where to put your money as a lightly decision that you should make without understanding some of the intricacies involved in those transactions. And please don't do anything risky without experience. Now that I've given you a few examples of how just having some knowledge and skills can help you avoid big money mistakes, 
What should you do if you want to continue to improve your financial literacy? Well, the best way to start would be to go to the library and get some books and some articles about the subject regarding financial literacy. You should take out books about budgeting, books about investing, and also books about credit. After you learn some things about that from the library, you should then take some courses that can help you get a better understanding of those skills and knowledge that you're learning. Because on top of you having a better understanding through courses, it will actually maybe give you a chance to practice the skills that you're honing. You will also want to expose yourself to financial information on a daily or at least a weekly basis. You can do that by reading blogs, listening to podcasts, and of course, watching videos on YouTube. I mean, this is how you found me, right? If you want to hear more money and investing insights from me and my sister, you can always join our free email newsletter that we call the Wealth Pack. In the Wealth Pack community, we break down tough topics and go into detail about what we know and what we're continuing to learn. Our goal with every email is to be valuable because we want to make sure just like a pack, no one gets left behind. If you're interested in joining the Wealth Pack community, which is totally free, then check the link in the description below. You know, the good thing about financial literacy is that you can start learning it at any age. You can go at your own pace and you can start right from where you are. It really is a life skill that once you learn it, you can start seeing an impact in your life right away. If you believe this video helped you learn the importance of learning financial literacy, do this twin a favor. Show me some love by hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.